Hello and welcome to today's webinar organised by the Surgical Academy, where we'll be going through the portfolio requirements for core surgical training applications. My name is Dr Tiffany Marie Borg. I am a London-based doctor and I'll be talking to you about the portfolio today. So core surgical training interviews are usually held between January and March. There have been a couple of changes to the 2021 process due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Basically, what that means is that candidates were now shortlisted based on their portfolio score uh, to reduce the actual number of interviews that took place. Now, whether you're a foundation year doctor, a medical student, or you're taking a year out of training, if you are serious about applying for your core surgical training, it's important that you review the portfolio points early on to put yourself in the strongest position within your time scale. Today, we're going to break down the Oriel portfolio scoring for the 2021 uh, cohort because that's the most recent um, scoring in place. And we're going to advise on how to maximise your points in each section. Your portfolio is worth a third of your overall score. Given that it's the only aspect to your application that you can actually control your points for, so it comes to your guaranteed points, that's why it's so important to do what you can to uh, make the most of your portfolio points. Um, the remaining 66% of your interview points are based on your management and your clinical stations during your interview. The Surgical Academy is going to provide more support uh, with interviews later on. So keep an eye out for future events. So. The first section of your portfolio is based on your commitment to surgery. This part of the portfolio is very broad, um, so you can get points from various categories. The first part, it's arguably one of the harder part ways to get points, um, but it's about sitting and hopefully passing your MRCS Part A exam. To get the full points, you do have to pass Part A. Um, if you're in the run up to your exam and you don't think it's feasible that you can sit or pass the exam, you can at least book the exam because that's a very easy one mark to get. The next way that you can show your commitment to surgery is by attending surgical courses. Now there's a lot of courses that are accepted and it should be a relatively easy way to get points um, because you can book and go to lots of courses within quite a short time scale. And to be fair, like, in addition to getting your points, it's actually a really useful way to improve your clinical skills and your knowledge for clinical practice. Of the various courses out there, the basic surgical skills and the advanced trauma life support, um, those are the two most common skill uh, courses that are undertaken by trainees but it's worth noting that they book very, very heavily in advance. They try to plan early. The other good thing about those courses is that your study budget from your hospital might be able to cover some of the course fee, though that might be dependent from one hospital to another. Other courses that may be worth going to are courses run by ASSET, the BMA, or other Royal Surgical Colleges. If you're going to theatre, keep a record of your cases. So you need to have at least 15 cases where your logbook is uh, recorded as either assisting or supervisor trainer scrubbed um, for your full points. So start keeping a record on e-logbook. Ideally, this is supposed to be done from medical school and um, just to monitor your progress throughout your training and make sure that it actually gets signed off by a consultant before your application. If you're taking a taste a week in surgery, this should be another way to get some easy um, marks. Whilst you're on your taste a week, use this as an opportunity to try out a specialty that you're interested in and perhaps even to help you preference the surgical jobs that you list for your core surgical training application. Obviously, you can also use it to increase your uh, logbook and to network with surgeons and sign up for research and audits. So your taste of weeks are a very good way to build on more than just your, your basic points for surgical taste of week. If you're still a med student, it's highly, highly recommended that you do a surgical elective. 
If you've done one, make sure that you reflect on this elective for evidence purposes. The electives are usually done in med school, but you can actually also do one in your F3 if you decide to take an F3. Um, if you're struggling financially, it's worth taking a look to see if I think any bursaries are available. Uh, so some surgical societies offer bursaries for medical students and for people later on who would like the opportunity for some hands-on surgical experience. The next section is about additional degrees. To be honest, there's no easy way to maximise your points in this section if you're on a short time scale. By the time it gets to your application, you either have these points or you don't. If you're still in med school or you're in a position where you'd actually like to sit or take another degree, the shortest option to max out your points here would be to do an intercalated master's with first class honours or to do a master's degree. Gaining points in this area is expensive and it's time consuming, so don't worry too much. It might actually be better if you focus on other areas of the portfolio, but all to their own. Um, if you don't get a first, it's okay. You'll still get a, um, two points if you score a 2-1 or above. Other ways to score major points are through prizes and awards. People always forget that these are a way to uh, get more points. And it's crazy, one prize will get you over double the number of points compared to sitting the MRTS exam, which is comparatively a lot more work. Um, if you're not sure about how to even go about applying for these kind of prizes, the best way to start is by looking at the various medical colleges. So take a look at the Royal Society of Medicine webpage. They have a whole list of prizes that are available with various um, deadlines. The Royal College and other specialty specific colleges also have prizes. There's other options if you don't get a national prize. If you do get a bursary, for example, um, to go on a certain elective or a local prize, you can also get some points. So audits and quality improvement projects. So this is something that you're bound to have come across once you've started working in an NHS hospital. To get full marks in this section, you need to have had a leading role in the design and implementation of a sustained change. So basically what that means is you need to have completed more than one cycle and you also need to have presented the results of these at a regional or a national meeting to get your full points. If you start your project super early on, ideally in your F1 year, and identify any conferences or meetings that are accepting audit submissions, this should be doable. Always, always remember to register the audit with the audit department and keep evidence of your presentation at whatever meeting that you present at. Um, the reason I'm saying to register your audit with the audit department is because there have been trainees in the past where they do all the work and when they go to register, they discover that actually that audit's recently been done or there's a reason for um, the audit department to not register. And unless it's a fully registered audit, you will not get your certificate of completion. So this is your other way to get points. So your maximum points will be if you've presented at a big meeting. If you've only been like partially involved or you haven't completed many cycles, uh, you do still get points, but not as many points. Now, many trainees have this dilemma. Do I do a really good audit uh, in such a way that I can impress my seniors, I'll do a project for my consultants, or am I pushed for time and just need to score my points? So the, there's pros and cons with either, and I guess it depends on how close to your applications you are. So if you are looking to try and get a high quality audit, Yes, it's good because you can impress the assessor who's actually looking at your application down the line. It's also more likely to get accepted at a conference. So compared to a small audit, you're more likely to present at a big meeting. It's also potentially able to win a prize. So you've got options to score in multiple ways with one big good audit. Uh, the problem is that it usually takes several months to complete. And because trainees typically rotate every couple of months, they might find it difficult to a complete the audit in the first place, but also implement the change which is needed to do a re-audit loop. If you're a month or two before your deadline and just need to squeeze in quick, easy audits, go for something that's straightforward. Yeah, it's not super 
super niche or interesting necessarily, but they're important audits and you can do them in a short space of time. So examples of what you can do, BTE checklists, prescriptions, surgical documentation, consent forms, that sort of thing. Again, so as an F1, you're very likely to be asked to teach and support your medical students. If you're doing this, ask for feedback. Just asking for feedback and having a like formal feedback of your teaching is a quick, easy two points. Odds are you're delivering this teaching to the students anyway, um, be it bedside teaching or more formalized medical student teaching. So just get your feedback in. If you're hoping to score higher in this section, it requires thinking a bit more in advance. So work with your seniors and your other colleagues and try and deliver a series of teaching sessions. Again, always remember to keep your evidence. The reason why you're, um, it's important to do this instead is because you're more likely to um, teach over a long period of time. And by doing so, it's, you'll score higher. Whilst it might not be feasible to achieve a higher qualification in teaching right before the interview, which is your maximum four points, it is achievable to score two points if you do a brief training period in teaching. The Royal College definitely has a two-day course available for this, this two-point requirement. There's also other online courses, so you can actually do a course from the Open University and that will score you your one point. Um, the good thing about that is that many of these online courses are free, so you don't have to spend lots and lots just for a few extra points. I think the masters and PG dips, they are, they're in the thousands, so think twice if, you're, if it's worth it for you. I think you have to really want to be involved in medical education to go ahead doing that. Another like, cheeky tip is to look at what's been covered in medical school. So some undergrad courses actually provide dedicated training and teaching modules, and that in itself will get you two to three points in this section with no extra work. So take a look at your background and try to find any certificates or proof of attendance. If you're doing projects or getting involved in anything, try and present. So presentations include regional, national and international conferences. And at these you can present posters or oral presentations. Many applicants are actually really unaware of the low rejection rates, especially for small conferences and poster presentations. It might be a lot easier to get accepted than you think. If in doubt, just apply. You're not going to lose anything by applying to present to the conference. Best way to try and see what conferences to apply for is just to take a look at what surgical societies exist, what events are coming up and what conference deadlines there are. Um, there might also be radiology, pathology and anatomy conferences in the future. Now, publications. Publications are a massive cause of stress for a lot of um, junior doctors. It is also arguably the hardest part of your portfolio to score highly in. The best way to, to sort of get your foot through the door with um, publishing is just to get involved in any kind of research that's going on. So talk to your consultant or your mentor and just ask if you can get involved with a project. Once you've started publishing and other seniors notice that you're able to write, you know how to publish, that sort of thing, it'll become a lot easier because the seniors will want, you, want to get you involved. It's just about getting your foot through the door initially. Leadership and management is also quite a difficult section to score highly at if you're trying to do this at short notice. So regional national leadership positions often require application and preparation well in advance. So think about this in your F1 year or even before that. There has been an update in the 2021 cohort to provide points for non-medical based leadership and management activities. This is quite nice because it actually broadens the scope allowing you to get points for having obtained any sort of involvement in sporting, charity, innovation, or creative arts. When you're doing this sort of thing, consider areas where you're actually interested and relevant. So if you want to pursue a certain specialty, maybe go for that specialty within surgery, or even like a charity organization that's associated with that surgery. 
if you're struggling to get a national role, that's fine, don't worry, most people are. Um, other options that are much more achievable include local roles. So there's several positions at this point. You can either be a trainee rep, so that could be an F1 rep, a two rep. That's an easy four points. So if we look at the, the, smaller, the smaller point scoring system, uh, you can apply for these at your trust during your induction. If not available, you could always suggest another position. Other options, you could um, get a role in the doctor's mess, probably the easiest point in the portfolio and something, again, to apply for during induction. You could also apply to be your road coordinator for your foundation trainees in the department. And you can also get involved as being a monthly mortality and morbidity meeting organiser. We can organise a giant club in your department. That's all from our side. We hope that you found the session useful. Um, basically, I think the key thing for your core, um, your portfolio, think in advance. Plan, 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 and think in advance. When it comes to your actual um, applications and your interviews, the Surgical Academy is definitely going to be providing more support um, at a later date. So if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. We are here for you. Have a great day and best of luck with your portfolios.